And it turned out to be this woman, Lisa McPherson, who was in Scientology for, I think it was 17 years, something like that. She, she was a devoted member of Scientology. She had left her small town in Texas to come to Clearwater. So her whole world, Lisa's whole world, was re revolving around Scientology. And she had a psychotic break. And she was driving down the road in Clearwater and had a, um, had a minor car accident, just a little fender bender. And the paramedics came to the scene of this accident. And Lisa had taken off all of her clothing and was walking down the street naked. So Lisa was taken to the nearest hospital, the Morton Plant Hospital, which is just a few blocks away from the Fort Harrison Hotel. And she was checked into the hospital and, and into the psychiatric ward. Uh, and within an hour, 10 Scientologists, including Panetta Slaughter, showed up at the hospital and talked to Lisa and talked her into signing herself out. And the Scientologist, you know, the doctors weren't happy about this, but Lisa had said, yeah, I want to go with my friends. So she, Lisa was taken back to the Fort Harrison Hotel. And she was put on what they call Baby Watch, L. Ron Hubbard's introspection rundown, which is his theory of how to deal with somebody who is a PTS type 3, a potential trouble source type 3 is how Hubbard referred to it. It's someone who's suffering a psychotic break. Hubbard said that they should be isolated, no one should talk to them, they should be in a peaceful, quiet uh, setting to help them you know, come out of this psychosis until they're ready and well enough to be uh, audited and solve the, the, the basic problem that's causing their trouble. And the people who were watching over Lisa were people who were, you know, people in oftentimes who didn't even speak English. They were these low-level people on staff who were told, just a garter, to, to watch, don't talk to her, don't respond to her when she's talking to you. Uh, and, and every day they would keep logs of, of Lisa's behavior. And it, it's clear that she's becoming increasingly more deluded, more lost as the days go by. They're force-feeding her medicine with a turkey baster. She's speaking, uh, uh, she's, she's saying that she's L. Ron Hubbard, that, um, uh, you know, she, she's, she's smearing her feces on the wall. I mean, it's horrible. And she was held there against her will for 17 days. On the last day, she's in horrible condition. And rather than call an ambulance, the Scientologists decide to throw her in a van and drive her to the hospital. But they don't go to the Morton Plant Hospital, which is just a couple blocks away. In fact, they pass several hospitals to go a great distance to, I think it was Port Ritchie Hospital, where there was a, a Scientologist doctor on call. And they brought her into that hospital and she was dead on arrival. And the, the doctor was just appalled, saying, how could you do? How could you bring her here like this? Um, so it, it was a it was a horrible, horrible end to this this young woman's life. Eventually, people started to hold memorials for her every year in Clearwater, Florida. Critics from all around the world would come in and hold a vigil on the uh, on uh, the the eve of her death. Um, Bob Minton and Stacy Brooks talked to the family and convinced the, the, the they, they got the family to agree to to uh, allow Bob and Stacy to use Lisa's name as part of a new organization that would be helping Scientologists so no one else would fall into this same situation. So Bob and Stacy, at the very beginning of the year 2000, they opened the Lisa McPherson Trust in Clearwater, and this was the building that was right next door to Scientology's Office of Special Affairs. And it was a very small staff. I think there were four of us. I was brought in to do the media work for, for the, the company. 
I had no idea, you know, what, uh, what my salary was when I went down there or anything like this. They just said they wanted me to be a part of it, and I said, okay, I'm coming. Um, and it was a, a very fascinating time. Um, within two years, they, Scientology had pretty much run us out of town. They had kept us in endless depositions, court case after court case, sometimes with legal situations like uh, there, there are a couple of encounters that Bob had with Scientologists on the street where they would uh, try to entrap him into becoming physical and, and uh, he would, he would uh, he a couple of times got caught that way and, and had to stand trial and he was found not guilty because it was clear that the Scientologists were egging him on. Um, but the, the, it was non-stop court stuff. Most of the time, a lot of the time that I spent there was spent preparing videos for, uh, you know, court uh, hearings and, you know, sometimes testifying myself. So the church's entire strategy was to keep the to Lisa McPherson Trust endlessly occupied in legal right. proceedings. Right, uh, you know, to bleed you dry financially. And, and, and Bob had set aside a certain amount of money to run the LMT for four years. We had run through that the first year because of all the legal fees that Scientology racked up. And then they found other ways to keep us busy. After the, the place had closed, uh, people came forward to say, you know what, I was a Scientologist at the time and it was my job every day to call the LMT and just pretend that I was an upset parent and just be sobbing away and not let them get off the phone. We just wanted to tie up the phone, waste their time so that other people who, who might want to call them would, you know, just get a busy signal. It, it, so there's a lot of nonsense like that. But it was a fascinating time. Fascinating to see the city of Clearwater react to our presence there because by the time the LMT opened, the city of Clearwater had kind of resigned themselves to having Scientology, you know, in, in their midst, you know, running the downtown. And a new city manager had come into office, his name was Mike Roberto, and he used to work in Miami, and he said, hey, I, I came to peace with a mob down there, we found a way to coexist, and it's the same thing here in Clearwater. We want to keep them off the front pages, we just want this to, to quiet down, let them ruin people's lives, it's not our problem. Um, when we came to town, he was very upset because we brought Scientology back to the front pages again, and, and the city was not happy about that. And I've got my camera rolling as we're going back to the car. And one of the German filmmakers says, Achtung, Achtung. And I turn around and there's a guy with a hammer right by my side. A hammer. And yeah, he's, he starts hitting the camera with the hammer and it starts threatening me. You know, and saying, you know, get the fuck out of here. Pardon my language, it was his language. Yeah, sure. Um, this is an OT, I take it? No. Uh, the, the, he, um, he was working as a, as, as doing some work at this, this Scientologist's house. The police were called about this altercation. I had it on tape. The officer who arrived at the scene didn't want to look at the tape. He said, uh, I've seen you downtown, haven't I? I said, yeah, I work for the Lisa McPherson Trust. He said, all right, let me see your ID. So he was worried about me being a, a problem because I worked for the LMT. We said, this guy, look, he came at us with a hammer and hit the camera. I don't care. He wouldn't look at it. Another cop came, he wouldn't look at it. Finally, a sergeant came down and he was the first one to actually look at the tape. And no charges were pressed. 
They did a news story on it that day on one of the TV stations. A crew of out-of-town investigative reporters got some footage they were all not expecting today. No, a cameraman was attacked by somebody who apparently had nothing to do with the story. Uh, Fox 13's Imani Channel is going to tell us what happened. A warning from a German TV producer. What if I smash that for you? Then the attack. Oh, I'll smash it. You better go. I called the cops. It happened yesterday in a normally quiet Clearwater neighborhood. Two German filmmakers and one local cameraman say they were working on an investigative story. And they had footage of, 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 from my camera of the incident. And the Church of Scientology says, we have no idea who this guy is. Meanwhile, we got the, the camera guy's, uh, I mean, the, the hammer guy's name that was in the report, and we looked through the Scientology magazines, and there he is in the completions, where they list who's taken what courses. Well, look, he, they, they, they say he's not a Scientologist. They, he's right here. <laughs> and that, because that was on the news, then the police said, all right, we'll go back and talk to him. It doesn't look like success through communication worked for him. Right. And they discovered, they discovered then, when they went back to the guy, that he lied about his, his uh, name, his age, his social security number, and he was actually wanted on drug charges down in Key West, and so they whisked him off to jail for a year. But they wouldn't have done that if the media hadn't been on the story saying, Scientology's lying to us, and they're lying to the police. And this is the type of stuff that Scientology does all the time. And they need to be called on it. And Scientology, I mean, the Clearwater was not doing that. They were saying, listen, we can't do anything about it. And after we left town, things went back to normal. Politicians started going back to the Fort Harrison Hotel and having fundraisers sponsored by the Scientologist. Come to fly so we can take you to OT.